We had a nice win against Texas Tech this weekend, but obviously we have a long season to go. We're headed to Fort Worth this weekend to face TCU, which we're really excited about. And I'm here to answer y'all's questions down below. But first, this video is sponsored by Shakiba Capital, a new way to invest. Visit ShakibaCapital.com today to grow your portfolio. And a big thanks as always to Inside Texas for bringing fans exclusive content. Sign up at InsideTexas.com for top-notch insider info. All right, Homer, what's the first question? What's up, y'all? Texas Homer here, and I have that first question locked and loaded. A big focus last week was starting fast on offense, and that's what we did. What things in practice actually help translate to starting quickly on game day? Do you practice with more intensity, heavier work earlier in practice? How do you actually make a fast start happen? Yeah, I think, uh, first of all, just the intensity that we have um, each practice and each rep. But every Wednesday, we actually, right after warm-up, we, we go right on to good on good. So uh, I think that was a big component, just really focusing on that this week and, and understanding that um, practice translates to the game. So um, just starting fast and having a good period and on, on that, um, specific time in practice, I think really helped and translated for us during the game. Started early and it didn't stop, man. And then after stringing together back-to-back -back solid performances, Ulysses asks, has this team developed the attitude of a team that can get punched in the mouth and fire back? And how do you build that mindset program wide? It's more of like a boxing mentality. I think uh, throughout the season, a team's going to be for, faced with adversity. Um, you don't know necessarily when that will come or how dramatic it will be, but uh, I think that that's a big component um, on making a team who they are. And uh, I'm really proud of our guys and how we bounced back from um, that Arkansas game. And uh, just putting together two, two big games, I think, really bu builds our confidence and understands that it's a long season and um, just continue to fight and get better. And speaking of building confidence as a quarterback, how does it feel knowing you have this group of backs to hand off to? Does it ease the pressure a bit? No, of course. <laughs> of course. Our back game is is incredible. We have probably one of the best rooms in the country, in my opinion, the best. So uh, just being able to hand the ball off to those guys makes life on us super easy. Um, it makes, makes our life a, a whole lot better. So uh, it's always fun to just handing it off to those guys and just sitting back and watching them you know, go ball. Uh, it's really fun to watch them. And, and some of the plays they make are incredible. So um, they really make our life easy. They're a blast to watch and they all have their unique style. But when it's time to pass, James asks, what liberties do you or Casey have to audible and check plays at the line based off of the defensive look? Or does that come with more time in the system and experience or are the checks already built in? Yeah, there's built in checks, um, especially during the week, scouting a team, that sort of thing. Uh, but within the offense, just going back to fall camp, they they installed stuff to where we can check on certain plays according to different looks. So it obviously gets adjusted a little bit week by week on the team that we're playing uh, and the calls that are in. Um, but they give us the the chance and opportunity to change a play and get into a better one when that when that opportunity comes. It's crazy how modern offenses just make defenses wrong no matter what. And all right, brothers, time to talk some TCU. And TCU has been a thorn in our side. So how is the team approaching getting the TCU monkey off of our back? And how does Sark walk that line between understanding that the fans want to beat TCU in particular while keeping y'all inside yourselves and not trying to overdo it? So what's the psychology behind this game's prep? Yeah, I think every game we want to go in there and, and play well and, and win, obviously. Um, and I think we're treating it that way. It's just another game and another opponent, and we're going to have to go out there and execute. Um, but also, it's obviously kind of in the back of our minds, and um, uh, we understand that. And uh, just we have the ability to change that perspective. And I think that's that's how we're going into this week in this game. But, um, I mean, overall, it's just another game, but we do that. We do have that in, the, in our back of our minds. So. It's that mix of understanding the context but not letting it dictate actions. And one thing I'm interested in going into our first away game, do you think as a team the Arkansas environment prepared y'all for the angry crowds we're going to be facing the rest of the season? Yeah, I think so. I think it was a good learning experience for us as a whole and as a team. Uh, we know we're going to be faced with hostile environments throughout the season. So uh, just learning from it, you know, that was a big, big learning curve uh, for us as a team and the way we bounce back and uh, especially on the road will we'll show a lot about this team. And um, so I think it was a, it was a big learning curve um, and it will just prepare us more for this game. 
And sticking on the environmental factors, as of now, the weather forecast is a 90% chance of rain on Saturday. So retweet my two cents asks, does rain change how we plan for TCU? Does the team prep for weather issues if it becomes a rush-heavy mud bowl? Not necessarily. We're going to go in there with the same game plan, and uh, it's an external factor and something we can't control. So um, we can't control it, so we just have to go in there and, and act like it's, it's no different than any other game. Um, and fight through it and fight through that adversity. Um, throughout the week, we've practiced and prepared for it, uh, which I think is really important. We have wet ball drills on certain periods and stuff like that. So uh, I think just throughout the week, um, just us preparing for it will, will help us a lot. Okay, cool. I didn't know y'all did wet ball drills to get reps with it. And as a quarterback, how can rain affect your performance? Obviously, just makes the ball a little wet, you know. Um, that That's first off, but uh, I know I know we'll do a great job. Um, just inter- interchanging the balls and stuff like that and getting them as dry as possible. So, um, again, just try not to focus on that and just play play the way that we play all, all season long. Oh, and I got one for Sark, so we're running up the chain of command. I was watching the Cowboys game against Philly the other night, and Zeke has this bad habit of wiping his hands on his towel before his run play, and it's a big tell. So tell the backs to watch when they wipe their hands during a rainy game. But TCU has been down a couple of key defensive starters in defensive end Kyrie Coleman and corner Noah Daniels. And Gary Patterson won't say if they're going to return to this game or not, but most likely. If they are able to have their full squad back together, how could that change game dynamics for us? Or is it the typical Sark mantra of it doesn't matter who they field, we're going to play regardless? I think uh, they're great players. Um, Obviously, we're preparing and expecting them to be back, but I mean, you never know. So um, but at the end of the day, it's just just how we execute. You know, it doesn't matter who who we're going against or who we're facing, as long as we execute the way that we know we can, and we should just be we should be just fine. So uh, I think it's just our execution ex- execution, and uh, I think we'll we'll be all right. And Patterson's an important figure in college football because he led a no name school back in the day in TCU to a major Power Five conference, and he won that conference multiple times with his defensive scheme. He's not just some guy mimicking play calls. He's a real architect of a very influential defensive system. And he honors that system. And he doesn't stray from it. And it does give quarterbacks problems. So, Hudson, what is it about their coverage that can trip up quarterbacks? They're really good and really sound in what they do. They don't overcomplicate anything or do a lot of looks where it makes their their players confused and be in the wrong position. They kind of do what they do and they are who they are. And they're really good at it. So uh, I think that's what makes them uh, really special as a defense. And um, they're coached very well, and they know exactly where to be when when they're supposed to be there. Uh, so they execute very well, and I think that's what makes them special. And Patterson always wants more defensive backs than wide receivers on a side. So two wide receivers on one side are going to be covered by three defensive backs. Single side receivers have two defensive backs on them and et cetera. So what are the keys to walking out of Fort Worth with the win? I think it's just executing. Um, I think even being at a away game and, and stuff like that, um, just going in there and playing the way that we play and don't pay attention to the external noise. Um, just focus on ourselves and go out there how, how we prepared all week. Um, and I think that's going to be a big factor in, in, in this game. And we've been executing on third downs at a top five rate, but we are not doing well on getting first downs on first or second down. And that's causing us to face more pass rush than we should. So what's that like as a quarterback to have those ends closing in on you? What is it like to face a truly talented pass rush? I think it's the balance um, when you're in the pocket, uh, knowing when to get through and progress on with your reads and staying strong in the pocket and and having some contact courage, uh, throwing the ball. And then I think there's a time and a place to get out of the pocket and try to create and make plays. So I think it's that balance. Um, it's that, It's that fine line and just understanding that. Um, and then I think, I think too, um, something we need to focus on is, is just being in a better, reasonable second short and, and that sort of thing. So we don't have to put ourselves in a third and long position to, to where that's the case. So um, I think that's something that, that we can improve on and uh, it just makes life easy, easier for us. So say that D end is wrapping you. Do you feel them behind you like a spidey sense or is it like a timer in your head? How do you know when they're about to get you? I think you can feel it. Um, it's kind of like an instinct and a feeling that you have. Um, you can kind of feel it around you. And uh, I think that's why pocket presence is, is really important. 
um, kind of helping out your own linemen the way you step to kind of being able to put them in a better position to block the guys. So uh, it's just factors like that um, and something that obviously the more you do, the better you get at it, especially in a, in a live environment. So um, I, th- I think that is something that helps out the alignment and can help, help us out as well. I remember in middle school football, I was left tackle and my best friend was the quarterback and I'd get beat often and I'd yell at him to throw the ball. So do y'all ever get any of those out on the field? Yeah, not too much. I think it just happened so fast that it's kind of hard to communicate at that point, but um, that, that's pretty funny. Yeah, it seems to only really be effective at the middle school level. And now we have a few general fan questions. So Cameron asks, what were your first impressions of Sark's offense when you were first learning? And what do you think of the scheme now after four games? Obviously, watching him in Alabama um, was super exciting, um, knowing that he was going to come here and how he was going to be put in, in, in that offense, um, really explosive offense. And I think just from fall camp or spring ball to fall camp, even to now, uh, it's kind of adapting over time. And there's there's more shifts and more motions uh, the more we get comfortable with the system. So um, I think slowly it's it's adapting um, to what we're good at as a team. And uh, I think that's what makes Coach Shark such a special play caller and um, what makes his offense so explosive. What do you think it is that makes him such a creative play caller? Like Kiffin, Sark, Riley all have that diabolical way of screwing with defenses. What do you think the secret sauce is with Sark? Yeah, I think he's really good at getting the ball to his playmakers. And uh, he knows who the go-to guys are and who he wants to get the ball. So it's just manipulating his offense um, and getting those guys in the spots um, for them to get get the most balls and, and that sort of thing. So I think he's really good at using um, the best players that he has and, and making them have explosive plays. Yeah, he makes his players look good and they return the favor for him. And then uh, Jonte Randolph had a good question. He said, which coach has the best jokes or roasts the players the most? And who's the most strictly business coach? Yeah, it's hard to pinpoint and say. I think every coach has that fine line between strictly business and also, you know, being able to have fun and enjoy it. I think that's um, what's so special about this coaching staff is, is they're really good at that balance and they're really good at, um, making it enjoyable for the players to be there. So I think each coach has their own unique way of doing it. Um, I will say Coach Banks uh, in the uh, special teams meetings is is super energetic and uh, he cracks some jokes here and there too. So, um, you know, all, all the players love that. And um, But I think every coach has their own unique way of doing it. And I had never heard Jeff Banks' voice until late last year. And now I understand why his voice barely works because he's screaming all the time. But it's not in like an angry or a mean way. He's just a original guy and his intensity is infectious. And then finally, Jay Austin 512 wanted to know, what hobbies off the field do you enjoy to take your mind away from football and just relax? Yeah, so I, I live right around the corner, um, about 40 minutes away. So just going home and spending quality, quality time with the family. Um, I'm blessed to have that opportunity to be to be so close to home and then uh, I, for me, I enjoy going out on the lake uh, a lot and kind of getting away. So uh, when I have the opportunity to do that, I, I try to do it and um, just try to have that balance between football and uh, getting away a little bit. Are you guys on the lake out there? Yeah. Um, oh, that's so sick, yeah. dude. <laughs> we're, we're like a minute from the marina where a boat is, and uh, so it's pretty nice. Are you a wakeboard guy? Yeah, I used to be more. Um, I'm, I've kind of transitioned to surfing a little bit more just cause it's less taxing on the body. And- yeah, man. At some point the coaches are like, chill, man. And, uh, that's all the questions for the week, Hudson. I will actually be at the game with fanatic perspective. So I'll see you there, but to everyone else, I'm out of here and good luck to the team. Peace. Thanks Homer. And thanks for everybody watching this video. Make sure you comment down below for next week's video so I can answer y'all's questions. If you haven't already, make sure you sign up at InsideTexas.com today for more exclusive content. Uh, And I'm really excited for this weekend, and I'll see you all Saturday.